How does my resume look? This right here is the most common concern and question that comes to my inbox daily. And as a headhunter, recruiter, and someone with 17 plus years on the corporate side as director of recruiting, I wanna share with you some tips and tricks to think about when you're either writing your resume or reviewing an old one. I'm Jeremy Nichols, and I'm here to help candidates and recruiters in the hiring process. So let's get into it. Resumes, one of the most important things in the interview process to have nailed down. For a candidate, it's a great way to have a snapshot of your experience and your career in a document for us as recruiters to view so we know if you are a right fit for this position. It is the first thing that we look at when we're assessing our job search unless we're looking at your LinkedIn profile. But we'll, we'll get into that in another video. But the resume is something that you need to have nailed down. And before I get into some tips and tricks on what to look at with your resume, please hit the subscribe button. Also, ring the notification bell for weekly updates. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. I will be updating this channel weekly with new content. So again, please hit the subscribe button and let's get into it. Resumes should be clean and simple. I'm gonna rinse and repeat. Resumes should be clean and simple. And the reason is most recruiters and headhunters, myself included, read your resume in six seconds on average. Now, we of course are gonna dig into it a lot more when the candidate is in the interview process. And I'll give you some tips and tricks on what to put into your resume for content but as far as the optics and what we look at, clean and simple. It should read down vertically, okay? We have hundreds of resumes coming to our desks. My team alone have hundreds a day, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're looking at that resume and we're getting the nuts and bolts of your background quick. And it should be something that is simple to read. It should read down vertically I don't wanna have graphs and info on the side, two vertical columns going down. Some of them have you know, things in the corner, right-hand corner, left-hand corner, picture, photo, graph. Stop, simple and clean. Now, there are gonna be exceptions to everything that I say. So what I'm gonna give you as far as tips and tricks is gonna be the most basic resume requirements, okay? Um, there will be certain you know, positions I know as far as in hospitality, the uh, events and sales and marketing teams like to have a little bit more content and make their resumes pop more. And it's, it's pretty much common in that industry. But again, for the most part, simple, clean, basic, read down vertically. I wanna look at your resume and on the top, I wanna see your header, centered, move down, I wanna see either your objective or your summary. I wanna move down. I wanna see your experience. I wanna see your job title, where you worked, your tenure, and then some bullet points on what you did there. I wanna keep on moving my way down. And I wanna see your certifications, accolades, accomplishments, education, and that's it. Top to bottom. Preferably two pages. If you are a newer and greener employee or this is your first job and you wanna put down, uh, say, things that you've done as far as volunteer, I get that. This is gonna be for a tenured uh, employee that I'm giving um, information for and that is gonna be two pages. Um, you can do three and again, somebody in the comments section might end up saying, well, Jeremy, what if I'm in IT or what if I'm in sales? Look. This is just the fundamental, basic things that we as recruiters are looking at. Let's talk about fonts. Personally, I like to see a nice, clean, simple font like Arial, Calibri. These ones are simple. Now, they're not gonna pop and be fancy and creative, but that's not what you're trying to accomplish in a resume. You don't want anything too busy. Um, now, I think fonts, tend to be trendy. 
I think earlier on, maybe a decade ago, I would see more Times New Roman type fonts, fonts that look like they were hit with a typewriter where even uh, 15 years ago I would see them. But right now, the Calibri Arial style font, and now you don't have to use those two fonts, but after you look at both Calibri and Arial, you can see what I mean about being simple. There's no extra detail in the uh, letters. And I think it's because most of us are reading on our iPads or our cell phones now, and the fonts that come up in social media are clean and basic. So it's just easier on the eyes, and that's, I think, what we're trained to look at right now. There's no studies or any kind of articles that I read to say that, but that's kind of what I notice when I've seen resumes lately are those simple fonts. Now you want to play with the bolding, and you want to make it make sense. So your header should always be bolded. And I would say make your, your name just a, a little bit bigger. So if you're at an average of a size 14 throughout your resume, you're gonna wanna pop your name out to a 16, an 18, depending on the font. So your name should be bold and bigger than everything else on your resume. Just a little bit, maybe two, four sizes bigger. Then where you live and your email address should be maybe two sizes smaller than your name, but still probably bigger than the rest of the fonts on the resume or matching the largest fonts on the sections, if that makes sense. So again, your header bolded, everything bolded. You wanna have your name, the largest font on the whole resume, and then what follows your name on the header, which would be your phone number, your email address, or your your address or city or state you live in should be two to four sizes smaller than your name, centered. And then as you work your way down, you want to have the part that says objective or summary before you put the content. You want that section, you want the word that says objective or summary bolded. And you want that the same size font as the information that is in below your name. So. For example, if you have a size 24 for your name, you would wanna have a size 22 or 20 for the info underneath of it. So if, if the size is 20 or 22 underneath your name, you want the size, the size of the font that says objective or summary to be 22 or 20 as well. Okay, you can play around with it, just see what it looks like optically, but I would say this, the same size as the info or maybe two sizes smaller. And then you're gonna have that same size from a, where it says objective and summary. Then you're gonna have it say um, experience and then the content below. And then where it says certifications or accolades or um, education, that the same size too. So those bullet point sections will be bolded and centered. So header, moving your way down, boom. Same size font uh, would be objective summary, bolded, centered after the content. Again, you wanna have your education uh, and accolades and experience. And I'm sorry, right above that in the middle <laughs> would be your experience, bolded, same size font. Hope that makes sense. But simple, clean, and reading down vertically with the, the sections, the titles of the sections, highlighted, bolded. Now let's talk about the sections. So it is common to have underneath your header the objective or the summary. Now, I don't think it's always necessary. So this is not something that's written in stone. I just think it, it looks nice on a resume. I'm used to seeing it. My, my trained resume eye is used to having that little bit of information there. I've seen where it says um, objective or summary um, right underneath the header and it can have a nice paragraph of a synopsis on who you are as a candidate uh, also you know I've seen bullet points maybe if you don't want to write the paragraph maybe uh, you want to bullet point a couple things about yourself that you want to address right away before we dig into the meat of your resume but again it should always be header and then either objective or summary underneath and then working your way down your experience so if it's current or your last employer should be top. Now, it doesn't really matter. I've seen where it says the company and how long and then your title or I've seen your title, then the company 
and then your tenure. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. A lot of times what I like to see is if you are at the same company, but you progress through your career and you're also putting the tenure of each position that you moved up in through underneath that company, you probably want to do company and then have your tenure. Like let's say ABC Hotel, maybe you were there for about 10 years at ABC Hotel, but you had three positions. You don't necessarily want to have it be, you know, um, general manager, two years, ABC Hotel, uh, director of sales, two years, ABC Hotel, assistant manager, um, six years, ABC Hotel. Some recruiters are flipping through so quick. I would really hate for you to be moved to the side for looking like a job hopper. Now, two years, 10 years is good, but my, my point is it's skipping and you were really at that same employer for 10 years. That's a great attribute. That's something that you want to tout. So putting something like ABC Hotel, 2010 to 2020, and then break down the three positions that you had underneath of it, that's what I would recommend. You can do the other way, but I would recommend if you're at the same company for a long period of time and moved throughout that company or management company or franchise or same ownership group, you you want to showcase that you have that tenure with that group um, on your resume. So when we're talking about your experience, you're going to have your um, title, company, tenure, and that's all bolded. And then underneath, you're going to have your bullet points. I've seen people putting in paragraphs underneath, talking about what they did at that position. I would advise, do not do that. We're reading so quick. Bullet points really help us as recruiters. So just have your bullet points. And here is a huge tip. Power words. We want to see what you accomplished. What makes you, you. Numbers are great. Percentages are great. Increased sales by or created or implemented or um, opened things that show you were part of doing this thing that was instrumental to the company. So power words are very important. A lot of recruiters, we don't want to see that copy paste job description just put underneath your job description. We want to see things that you did, percentages, numbers, and power words of things that you did as a decision maker. So let's dig into the way your resume looks a little bit more. Now optics, I said it before, I'm going to say it again, simple, basic. Please do not put your picture on there, graphs or graphics swirling around and trying to make it look you know, fancy, it just looks busy. Now again, there are going to be exceptions and industries where a headshot is fine, where a graph is fine. That's that's completely understandable. But if you are very, very um, adamant on having that resume have those pictures and graphs, okay, save it, but also make a simple one as well. You're going to want that simple version to get through the first step of the interview process. If it's going to an ATS or a recruiting manager before it goes to the director, I would tend to say have that simple one first, okay? When you are progressing through the interview process and if you're in sales or IT and, 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 and pictures and graphs are something that are common, you can still have that resume and you can bring that or send that once you're starting the interview process, once you're starting starting to engage and interview and do Zoom calls and face-to-faces, then, then you can have that resume. But please, if I can give you one piece of advice, make the basic one as well and use that for that applying online or the simple ATS application process. I think that the ATSs will pick it up a little bit more uh, if it's simple and clean and basic. And then you can bring your fancy, beautiful resume uh, through the process as you exceed and as you move th- forward with other hiring managers. No problem. Another tip to dig into that a little bit more 
is black and white. Black and white resumes. So again, you can have your beautiful, gorgeous, graphed out picture resume if you want with different colors. If that is the industry that you are in and that's normal, feel free to do so. But again, make the simple one and make it black and white. There are still recruiters out there that believe it or not, are printing your resume. And we print it because before we meet with you or we speak with you or it goes to another step in the interview process, a lot of us are highlighting things we wanna touch on that you put in your resume. And if you have blue ink or red ink or purple ink, and a lot of us are using black and white printers, we just do, I know I do now and I did at the office I was prior to this, and I know that directors that I've sent resumes to have done the same thing. And there's been times when recruiting managers for clients that I have have, have said stuff like, Jeremy, where is, where is his e- where's his email? I printed it. I can't, I can't find it. And then after doing some backtracking, I realized that they printed on black and white and that um, the ink didn't print up the signature or the, the date or they didn't print it or didn't print up the uh, email address. Whatever they highlighted in another color, for some reason, didn't pick up. Now, I know that you're, some people out there are chuckling like, who, who, who is using black and white or what kind of computer wouldn't pick that up? Some don't. And if it's a 1% chance that something's going to be missing on there, why risk it for purple ink? Right? So use black and white ink on your simple, basic resume. Again, if you are steadfast and you're adamant on having that beautiful, creative resume, keep it, use it, but use the black and white for your basic version. Now, I know the tips that I'm sharing in this video are by no means fun or exciting. They're basic, simple tips to help your resume get through through the interview process. Something that's gonna make it easier for a recruiter headhunter and hiring manager to notice your experience quick. You want to grab their quick attention, okay? Like I said, six seconds, sometimes 10 seconds, they're flying through a resume, you want to grab their attention that quick. Now, a lot of times when someone sends me a resume, and again, I have a lot of people reaching out to say, Jeremy, can you take a peek at my resume? And I notice this, 90% of the time, their resume guts are there. All the info that they need to make their resume great is already provided. It just needs some shifting and moving to make it read better. So with the tips that I gave you on bolding and then the objective and your experience and your accolades and your education, how it reads down vertically, make sure you're putting a space or two between each section just so it reads smoother. A resume is something that we on the hiring end are looking at super quick. I can't stress that enough. So don't obsess about it too much. The information that I gave you in this video should really help you as you figure out how do you want to um, reorganize your resume or rewrite it. If you have any questions at all, again, You can write them in the comments section below and I will 100% answer you. You can also send me a email at jeremy at gecko hospitality if you have any questions. If I don't have the answer, if it's industry specific, I will do my best to point you in the right direction. Now, I hope that this content in this video has helped you. And like I said before, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell and leave me any comments if you have questions. Now. I will be making a video next week and I'll be touching on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn profile is just as valuable as your resume. So tune in next week for my LinkedIn information and I hope you have a great week.